Hello everybody, my name is Alexander Kell. In my previous lecture, I was explaining how we use transfoc and machine learning techniques and a glass of water uh, to uh, analyze regulatory SNPs which control uh, or which are correlated with educational attainment. And we found very interesting insights, we found several pathways which can be related to that uh, phenotype. And in this video, we want to show how to apply our tools to get those results. We'll go step by step and you'll see how easy and how interesting it is to analyze regulatory SNPs using GeneXplain platform. So watch it. We applied the following algorithm. First, we took the SNPs and mapped them on genome and found 275 genes where those SNPs are located in exons, in introns, in three prime regions of those genes, and in five prime regions. Next, we took flanking regions around those SNPs and searched for enrichment of TFBS in those regions, and we found 99 uh, motifs, positional weight matrices, which are enriched in those regions. Next, we were focusing more on selecting proper positional weight matrices. So we looked for combinations of PVMs using the algorithm called Miller, and we found 41 positional weight matrices, which statistically significantly discriminate uh, the regions around the SNPs from the random regions in genome. Next, we take transcription factors which are connected to these 41 matrices and identify which geoterms and pathways are enriched among those transcription factors. And we found TGF beta pathway with five transcription factors found in our analysis. And finally, we look for the target genes, which might be a targets for this TGF beta pathway, and we found 117 genes which belong to a VNT pathway and which actually uh, enriched in regulation of neurogenesis. So, in fact, we were using this algorithm gradually to focus on transcription factors and on their target genes and pathways, which might be important for the educational attainment. So, the first step is to map SNPs on genome. So, we log in in GeneXplain platform. Uh, here it is. So, open the project and uh, go to the data and now we have to upload uh, the file, the Excel file with SNPs. So here we select uh, which column corresponds to the SNP accession number and uh, here it is. So now the, the table is in the platform. You see it is here so you can look at all fields of the table. You can sort by the p-value. You see the, at the top now the, the most significant SNPs and we, we see here 850 SNPs. Okay, so now what to do with them? So first we have to map them to the genome. For that, uh, we go now to the uh, function called uh, convert table to the track. So track is a special type of file which uh, is mapping to the genome. So now we put there the, uh, the table. And in that table, we have to change the sum of the field. For instance, change a uh, field for the chromosome has to be a text field. So now we put it in this uh, program. If we select um, which field is a chromosome, which field is the first position, second position, we also have to put there the, which genome it is. And now we run it, here it is. So basically we, uh, we see these SNPs on genome scale. We put there also information about genes and we can zoom in, zoom out. On this schema you see uh, where those SNPs are located. So the SNPs are red um, bars and uh, in each gene you, you can see the blue bars are corresponding to exons and the R's between uh, corresponding to introns and you can see also five prime region and three prime region of those genes. You can see how many SNPs actually were inside the gene. So basically inside the introns or exons of those genes so including also five prime and three prime ends of those genes, so regulator regions of the genes. The second step to run the enrichment of transcription factor binding sites in the flanking regions of the SNPs. So next uh, we want to basically take those SNPs 
and extend uh, left and right to 150 nucleotides to get a region around the SNP of 300 nucleotides, so a pretty short region where we want to search for the binding sites. Now we have those regions, as you can see, basically you can zoom in and see that this region is in the front of the SNP. So now the next step is to generate random sequences. So we take 2,000 random promoters and take regions from minus 5,000 to minus 4,700. So basically 300 nucleotides randomly picked up from upstream regions of random genes. And uh, we now extract those regions for further processing. Next is to search for enriched TFBS. We start this program. We put in there the 300 nucleotide regions around SNPs, and we put there as a control the random sequences. Now we have to select the uh, profile, basically the list of matrices, and we select from Transfac the complete library of vertebrate matrices. We have to specify some parameters, basically to run this program multiple times to have a possibility to select those matrices which are really enriched in several runs. So now we'll see the result. So here is a list of matrices which are enriched in our set of sequences. And we have uh, this filtering uh, by the number of runs in which uh, these uh, matrices were found. So we want to have uh, either 100% or 80% of runs. Now we save them, 99 matrices which were found to be enriched consistently in that set of sequences. We'll search for these sites to see them in genome and uh, now they are put in a genome browser. You see, for instance, this SNP and the region around that SNP. And uh, as a colored arrows below, you see those sites. Now the same is done for the random sequences. So um, we also search binding sites for the random sequences. And actually we found as well. The next step is to search for the combinations of positional weight matrices using Miller algorithm. So let's search for TFBS combinations using Miller program. Miller program is uh, described in our documentation. You, you can search in it and basically read what it is. So Miller program is, uh, is programmed to search for combinations for TFBS matrices. And then uh, it's uh, very important it doesn't use any cutoff or thresholds. And it is using sparse logistic regression. It is published in this paper by um, members of our team. And it is used here to run and search for combination of TFBS. And here in the method section, we describe uh, how it works. We build this logistic regression uh, using the sequence score. And the sequence score calculated using this formula, which is explained here on this uh, picture. So basically, we take uh, the one matrix and scan it through the sequence. And in each position of the sequence, uh, we calculate the score. And then if uh, the site is have a high score, we have a peak of that uh, score. And then we sum up all the scores across the sequence. And this summed score is then used for logistic regression. So now we are running this Miller program in our platform. And uh, to run it, we need, again, to put there this 300 nucleotide track around the SNPs and the control track from the random sequences. And now we use this profile, the selection of matrices, which we found in the previous step. So now we run this program, it takes some time and it gives you this output. So this is a list of matrices which are in combination discriminate the regions around the SNPs from the random regions uh, which are picked up from the genome. Now we can actually compare the results of uh, the run of that model on the, um, on the regions around the SNPs and the regions random picked up from the genome. And you see there is a difference of those scores between these two sets. A clear difference and statistically significant. Now we, we get this set of matrices and we can convert them into actually a set of uh, genes. So, and uh, we'll know which uh, genes are uh, connected to those matrices, which genes for transcription factors are connected to those matrices. So here we see genes. What... The next step is mapping of transcription factors to gene ontology and pathways. So now what we want to see whether those uh, gene sets, which can code for the transcription factor, 
they belong to particular categories, to gene ontology or other types of categories. We put it uh, here in this program, uh, and this program is actually a pipeline of several programs, and it runs through different uh, gene ontologies and other categories, and here you see the result. And we can filter through this uh, result and see that, indeed, uh, the uh, gene ontology category which belongs to the uh, differentiations on neurons and development of neurons is overrepresented in that list of transcription factors. So now we take these transcription factors uh, which are actually belong to this category and we can look also to which pathways enriched in that category of transcription factors and we see the top one is TGF beta pathway. And that's very interesting. Let's have a look at that pathway in our platform. For that, we first we save it uh, as a set of genes. So we have here these five genes which are belong to that pathway. But we also can uh, visualize it here in the platform in the form of network or pathway. So you see those red boxes are the transcription factor and the accomplices which we found in our analysis. And there, many of them are in this pathway. And at the top of that pathway, you clearly see the TGF beta and all other components of TGF beta pathway. And indeed, TGF beta family signaling is uh, known to be important. And during embryogenesis, uh, TGF beta family members regulate a lot of uh, neurological development, namely uh, this BMP, important for formation of neural tube. And the final step is to find the target genes for TGF beta pathway transcription factors and mapping them to gene ontology and the pathways. So now we see these five genes uh, which encode for the transcription factors which are belong to this TGF beta pathway and now we can create a profile from this set of genes. And now we have this profile uh, the list of matrices and the um, motifs which uh, we can now use to search in uh, our gene set. So basically what we want to do is uh, we want to take this um, list of uh, regions of 300 nucleotides and run exactly these five matrices in them to know uh, in which regions we find those sites which are belong to TGF beta pathway. So uh, for that we put there this profile and now we see uh, those binding sites found in the regions around the SNPs. And now what we want to do, we want to run the same profile but in the random sequences. Why? Because now we want to compare sites found in the regions around the SNPs and sites found in the random sequences in order to define the cutoffs. So we know the, the matrices, here five matrices, but we, know, we need to find the optimal cutoffs. And now you see the sites in the yes sequences and in the no sequences as we call them, in the background sequences, and we run this optimization program. So we put here sites in the yes sequences and we put their sites for the no sequences and this um, program will start optimizing the cutoffs so we have to define uh, the new profile where we want to uh, put these optimized cutoffs. Here it is, so uh, we want to create a new profile. So uh, we run this optimization program. It's running very quickly. So we got these five matrices in the profile with optimized cutoffs. And now we also see where those sites were found in those regions around the SNPs. We mark those matrices and we visualize them on the regions. So you see this is a list of regions, 411 regions and uh, you see those sites found in the regions. And we have a column uh, with a total number of sites found in each of the region. So we can filter those regions and uh, select those regions which have at least one binding site. So 11, 117 regions were found. We can save them as a separate file. And uh, now the question is, this is a very specific set of uh, regions which are actually around the SNPs associated with educational attainment and they contain sites for TGF beta pathways. So now we want to <clears throat> map them on gene ontologies. For that we run the functional classification, mapping those, um, uh, those regions uh, into the gene ontology and we see that the top 
gene ontology terms are definitely related to the uh, morphogenesis of neurons, development of neurons. So let's take this term regulation of neuro neurogenesis and save it as a separate um, list of genes. So we have here these uh, nine genes which are belonging to this uh, term of regulation of neurogenesis. And at the top you see this uh, TCF4 gene which encodes uh, the TCF uh, transcription factor which is very important. So we can have a look in the genome browser just copying this ensemble ID. Uh, let's go uh, to the uh, genome browser and jump into that uh, gene. So we, we see here this TCF4 gene and we have, can have a look where is these uh, SNPs which we are analyzing inside this gene. And we see those uh, SNPs and also we look at that particular SNP where this region around the SNP is, uh, has four sites for uh, three transcription factors which are involved in TGF beta pathway. And these are very important factors uh, as we were discussing in the uh, video before. So in summary, we took SNPs which are associated with educational attainment and we mapped them on genome. And we see that many of them are actually located in regulatory regions of genes, in introns, in up upstream regions of genes which are regulating expression of those genes. So we search the regions around the SNPs, pretty small regions, 300 nucleotide, for enrichment of transcription factor binding sites. And here we involved a special new program which is using machine learning, which looks for the combinations of motifs, not just for a single motif, for the combinations of them. And we found a list of uh, motifs which are together enriched in those regions. And when we took those motifs and looked for the transcription factors which are connected to those motifs, we see that these factors are involved in such important pathways like TGF beta. And we also see that those sites are located in the regions of genes which are involved in another connected pathway like VNT pathway, which is working together with TGF beta pathway. And uh, they actually are involved in development of neural tissue and they at very early stage of development of our organism. So it's very interesting insight how those SNPs are in re regulatory regions of genes are controlling expression of the genes and how these genes are involved in neural development and also in diseases. Thank you very much and see you next time.